I do best, I stay with my dietary skeleton. And my dietary skeleton keeps me as, as a salad and a soup for lunch. A big salad with a nut seed based dressing and a bowl of vegetable bean soup for lunch. So salad, soup, or, or chili, or stew, but usually it's a soup I made on the weekend. And I usually make the soup with either veg, with low salt or no salt vegetable broth as the base. But most often I like to um, make the soup base with carrot juice, celery juice, tomato juice, and even juicing an onion. So I'd rather just use the vegetable juices. They have more concentrated flavor, especially when you use organic carrots and organic, you know, and, and celery gives you a real lot of flavor. And then I could dilute that half and half, half vegetable juice, half water as my soup base. Then I could put my vegetables in, blend in my green vegetables and my onions, chop up my mushrooms, put in the beans and the split peas, you know, and make my vegetable bean soup on the weekend. Um, I usually cook the split peas in a separate pot than the other beans because I usually, once they're done in like 20 to 30 minutes, I blend them in the blender to make them creamy like a green slurry and pour them in the soup because I don't want to blend the other beans into the soup to ladle out to blend the split peas, but I want the split peas to form part of the base of the soup. So I usually make it in a separate pot. So my beans are up there cooking. I, and then, then don't forget that the cruciferous greens like the bok choy or the mustard greens or the turnip greens, I'm usually blending that raw in the blender by with ladling a little soup, soup liquid in there just to make the slurry to make it cook because I don't, to make it, to make it blend easily. I don't want to cook those vegetables. I want to blend them in the raw so the enzymes aren't destroyed, but once they're blended, then you can pour that slurry into the soup. And then without cleaning the blender, you could put your raw onion, your raw scallion, and your raw leek in there next with a little bit of liquid with a little bit of soup liquid in there and blend that to a smelly slurry, which you know causes the organosulfite and the sulfenic acid compounds that would make your eyes burn. But I blend that and pure, pour that into the base of the soup. So the base of the soup has the salad vegetables, it has the slurry of the of the um of the onion and, and leek, and it has the slurry of the green vegetables. And then I can add my chopped mushrooms and my spices and, the, and anything else you want to flavor it. So that's my basic soup recipe made on the weekends. And so you let, and you, then I take that big pot of soup out of the, um, off the stove and, or shut the flame off, we eat that maybe Sunday night. And then, then before bedtime on Sunday night, the pot will be warm still, and I'll put it on the shelf in the refrigerator, the whole giant pot. I'll put on a shelf of the refrigerator. So then the next morning on Monday morning, I can take a ladle and I can empty the pot into 10 different plastic or glass containers, but maybe I have a container made so I can just grab and take it to work with me. But I don't want to put the plastic in the soup into hot, hot soup into plastic. But I put, that's why I put it the whole pot of the refrigerator. I don't want to be working with hot soup either. It's better to easier to work with cold soup. So I do that the next morning and put it into various containers and I have my lunch made for the whole week. And then my dinner is usually a cooked vegetable dish, but it's usually some green vegetable like steamed zucchini, steamed string beans, steamed broccoli, steamed artichoke hearts and asparagus. And my favorite thing to eat most often is just to steam artichoke hearts. I cut the artichoke in the middle down the half, cut off the thorns in the top, and then use a sharp knife to cut right along the curve of the choke, leaving the heart below it intact. So when I cut around the curve of the choke very deeply, I can pull out that center core, steam it for 18 minutes, and eat lots of artichokes. And then I'll make a mixed wok vegetable dish at night a lot, where I'll just wok with a quarter cup of water, some type of cabbage, usually like Savoy or Chinese cabbage, or bok choy, um, snow pea pods, I love to put them in there, a lot of onion and scallion and some type of mushroom. And maybe I'll open a can of bamboo shoots or, or water chestnuts. So I'll walk that for maybe seven minutes and that'll be my dinner in seven minutes. And I'll take either my sauce that I, can, that I made up, you know, the glass jars of the, you know, the Mexican Olay or the, or the um, Alfredo sauce or the, um, um, or the Thai, um, the coconut Thai sauce. And I'll put it on maybe two tablespoons of that, mix it up and it's done. And I have that with a piece of fruit for dessert or with, like I said before, I use like partially defrosted frozen fruit for dessert, like partially defrosted blueberries, partially defrosted strawberries, partially defrosted cherries, partially defrosted jackfruit, partially defrosted something I like, partially defrosted mango as a dessert. And I got my, my meal and it's not hard to do this and to keep on track. And then breakfast is simple. 
It's a little bit of grain, usually, a little bit of grain, like quinoa is the fa my favorite grain, the healthiest grain, because quinoa has more protein and has more of those, um, you know, it's colorful, especially the brown quinoa, the tricolored quinoa. But it could be oats, steel-cut oats, or it could be some other whole grain, but it's usually just a little bit of grain anyway, because I want to have room to put my berries in there. I have like a whole cup of berries or frozen berries, and I want to put a tablespoon of hemp seeds on that and a tablespoon of either flax or chia on that, and maybe some almond hemp milk or soy milk or something like that. I like the almond hemp milk I make from scratch where I put one cup of almonds and hemp seeds mixed with six cups of water, a tablespoon of real vanilla bean powder, and one medjool date, or sometimes two medjool dates, and that will give me six cups of, of, um, of nut milk to put on my, to, to use, we don't want to use nut milk for more than two days because it's not pasteurized, that's what makes it healthier, but it doesn't stay for more than two days, it starts to go bad. So making six cups means that I'm gonna have a cup today and a cup tomorrow, and two other people in my family are gonna have a cup today and a cup tomorrow, and then it's gonna be gone. And we'll, you know, so I can make, if you wanted to make half that dose, you would then half a cup of nuts and seeds and three cups of water, and to one date and a teaspoon of, of real vanilla bean powder to make enough healthy milk. So what I'm saying to you with this skeleton, you can modify things, change recipes, to have, to have fancy desserts and do all these things on a nutritarian diet. There's 1,500 recipes, at least on drfirma.com. You can try different recipes, but I like people just to learn four recipes they like. That's all this takes, is you may try 100 recipes, but pick out four you like. Four salad dressings that are your favorite and, keep, and make them the most. Pick out four soup recipes you like, like I make a lentil pea soup with, a, with frozen corn in it. That's one of my favorites. I make the anti-cancer soup with the beans and the mushrooms I just described. And I make a sweet and sour cabbage soup that has the cabbage and the prunes. And I put a little apple cider vinegar in for the sweet and sour. And I put a little lentils in that. And, but in any case, and then I have the, so I have, so I have four soups I like. I have my salad dressings that I like to use the most. Like I use, I like to use my orange sesame dressing the most where I take two peeled navel oranges and I put like a quarter cup of sesame seeds that I, I toast on a pan for like two minutes. And I split the amount of sesame seeds, put half in the blender to blend with the two oranges and a few ca and some cashews and some blood orange vinegar and a squeeze of lemon. That's my favorite dressing. And I'll take the other sesame seeds that were toasted, either black or brown sesame seeds, and I sprinkle them on my salad. Maybe I'll put strawberries or kiwis in the salad with the tomatoes and red onion and the scallion. Um, and my other favorite dressing is just in my quick dressing is just I use tomato sauce. And I told you guys that I cook the tomato sauce. If I buy commercial tomato sauce, I cook it on the stove longer on a low flame to concentrate, to give it more flavor, to make it more dense. And then I mix it with maybe, or I'll make my own tomato sauce from the tomatoes in my garden and cooking it a long time to make it really thick and flavorful. Or I'll take a conventional tomato sauce and I'll soak the sun-dried tomatoes, organic sun-dried tomatoes into the jar of tomato sauce. So then I'll take the jarred tomato sauce with the soaked sun-dried tomatoes in it, and I'll blend it in the Vitamix. So I'll have thickened the sauce with the dried tomatoes to give the sauce more flavor. And I could put my almonds and my sunflower seeds and my fig vinegar and the fig or the balsamic vinegar and the raisin. So I'll make a tomato-based dressing. And that's my second favorite dressing that I use the most. I can mash it with almond butter and a little tomato sauce and some blood on it and some um, fig vinegar or balsamic vinegar to make a quick dressing in 30 seconds, but usually I'll put it in the blender and I prefer to use it with the real, you know, to make it the, the full dressing I explained with the, um, you know, by using the, the thickened tomato sauce and blending the almonds or sunflower seeds in, because I always usually mix a nut and a seed together to give me a wider nutritional profile. So as you can see, this is not that difficult to do. Your, ju your breakfast can be a glass of vegetable juice. It can just be a piece of fruit and you can head to the gym. It can just be a half of a cantaloupe and you head off to the gym or, or a, you know, eat, eat a piece of fruit and for breakfast. It could be a glass of vegetable juice for breakfast. You need a heavier, you want a heavier breakfast. It could be a grain and the berries with the flat, with the nuts. Then you have your salad and your soup for lunch with a piece of fruit dessert. And you have your, your cooked vegetable dish with maybe some raw vegetables for dinner with, you know, and when my favorite sauce, I mean, I'm just telling you my favorite recipe is the one I use the most. And you've got to pick out your favorite recipe. You only need three or four sauces. If you don't have time to make a sauce, you can buy one of my jarred sauces or jarred dressings, but it's so easy to do it. it. You know, if you can do it on your own, you're not traveling, you can, it's better when you do it on your own, probably, because my jarred dressings, because you have to keep the pH down, there's more vinegar in them, less nuts. I can do my own dressings by using the flavored vinegars with less vinegar, 
because they're not going to have a shelf life. You need more vinegar and more acidity for the chef to stay for months and months out of the refrigerator. So when you buy my commercial dressings, they're more vinegar, they're more a little bit acidic and they're thinner, they're not as thick. And I have less vinegar when I make my own dressings because I like it a little better, the taste better. But in a pinch, when I don't have time, I use my sauces and I use my vinegars. You know what I mean? Um, just like you can do it. So it's easy to fit this into your life. There's no excuses. This is not hard to do. You know, and then so you, there's, there's, this is really simple for people to follow this and it really still tastes really great. So my one favorite sauce that I make is, the, is a Thai sauce. I have a few variations of the Thai sauce. It's usually I take, I used to use like lemongrass paste because lemongrass is the secret ingredient in a Thai sauce for your vegetables. But the lemon bass, lemongrass paste has some oil and other ingredients I don't like. So I've been lately, I've just been taking, instead of people chopping lemongrass and cooking it and straining it and all that stuff, I just take the lemongrass and I cut a slice of it and I cut it in half and I remove the woody outer portion and use the inner portion, which is more softer. And I just blend it up in the blender you know, with the, whatever other ingredients in my sauce are in the blender. So I'll put a little water, a little soy milk in the blender, or it could be a few almonds with some water, or I'll put a little coconut in some water. In other words, in, I'll use some nut. Usually if I'm using a, I'll usually be you know, using a Thai sauce, I'll usually use a dehydrated coconut or a piece of fresh coconut. It's with the lemongrass blended with water. And now I might put some peanut butter in or, uh, or some hemp seeds. Um, and then I'll flavor that with a date, with one date usually, and you know, based on how many people, how much you're making. With now I'll add, I add the date and I add the coconut and the peanut butter, or I, didn't, or I make it without the peanut butter sometimes, and just put a little hemp seeds in. So it has the coconut flavor with, unhinged by the, not affected with the peanut flavor. And then I'll put the spices in, the cumin, the turmeric, the, you know, whatever, the, whatever kind of spice you want, a little bit of chili powder or chili sauce, or whatever, kind of, whatever kind of heat you want. But just, I, I like it with less heat, but just, uh, I, just so I can notice that there's a little bit of something hot in there, but just so it's barely noticeable. I don't want to usurp the whole flavor and make it super hot. And then I took and I blended that in the blender, dumped it on my vegetables, tossed, cut the flame off, and toss it with the hot vegetables for a minute or two. And I have a, my main dish made. So I have my main dish of mixed vegetables. And then I usually have some, some nights I just have some plain green vegetables, you know, with a piece of with a piece of squash, with a piece of sweet potato, with a piece of quinoa with peas in it, or with some frozen peas mixed with quinoa and mushrooms or something like that, or mushrooms and onions, or some egg cooked eggplant with some, with some fro fried, um, fried onion on top of the eggplant. I'll take the eggplant, bake it in the oven till it gets moist, cut it in half, scoop it out, sprinkle cinnamon on it, put some currants with, with fried onion. I'll take a really hot pan and I'll fry some, and I'll get the pan sizzling hot, and I'll chop the onion really small and hit the onion to that sizzling pan, throw it on there, just so it starts to glisten for a few minutes, take it off, put it on my eggplant with the cinnamon and the raisins on top, and maybe I'll dump that right on top of our salad or chop it up in a salad or, you know, so I'm, so I'm, make, I'm, I'm, I'm picked out the recipes I enjoy the most, and I just keep making them all over and over again. I know there's a lot more recipes, but, you, but you've got to find the ones that you like the best, the ones that can fit in your life. And I'm, what I'm talking right now is that, that, you, ha that this, you don't have to be a major chef. You just have to know, you know about four dressings, four sauces, four main dishes, four to a few desserts, and most of them can just be frozen, frozen fruits and a, f and, a few, um, and a few salad dressings you love. This doesn't have to be so complicated. You know, um, so you know your dietary skeleton, right? You know what you're having at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, so, and, if you're, and if you have a tendency of a very slow metabolic rate and three meals are too much for you, then have two meals and a glass of juice or just have two meals a day. That means the lunch meal and the dinner meal or the breakfast meal and the lunch meal or the breakfast meal and the dinner meal. But you vary it around. You know, you try to have the lunch meal with a salad almost every day when you go to a two meal day. So the salad meal with the salad and the bean meal, you have the beans with the soup and the salad you have every day. And then some days you have a breakfast with that. And some days you have a dinner with that. But then when you're dropping to a two meal schedule from a three meal schedule, you don't change the big salad every day. You, you modify the other meals occasionally. You're following that because some women, um, especially women don't um, do better on two meals a day to keep their weight at the appropriate weight. Because what you're learning from me and what we're doing here is that we're recognizing that fat on the body is serious. That a nutritarian, is a, fat on the body is a cause of cancer and shortens your lifespan. And a nutritarian is at a favorable weight or they're moving towards a favorable weight. 
if your weight is stagnated and you're not and you're overweight and you're not moving towards a favorable weight, you're not on a nutritarian program because you, that's keeping a stable overweight weight is not acceptable part of this program. If you're overweight, you have to be losing some weight each week. And I'm bringing this up because I noted in my Nutritarian Women's Health Study, we have 2,500 women signed up as Nutritarians doing this project, that the average weight in that study is 160 pounds on the average Nutritarian woman in that study. So, so what I'm saying here is that they've got the idea of eating healthy foods, but they still are eating other things, and they're still maybe overeating or overeating something. They're not carefully recognizing that part of this program is trying to remove the fat from your body. Just as important as eating G-bombs, just as important as eating mushrooms every day, just as important as eating some onions and eating your salad every day is making sure your weight is favorable. That's part of the program. And nobody could adjust the amount you're eating and the balance between the low calorie foods like the salad and the high calorie foods like dried fruit or, or, um, or um, nuts and seeds and you adjust the amounts so, you, so you're not overeating or starchy vegetables like too much um, or too much grain or too much, um, I don't really recommend white potato, even sweet potato, and, but squashes are more favorable, like butternut and acorn squash are more favorable. And for weight loss, spaghetti squash is lower glycemic and is more favorable than even butternut and acorn squash. And so in the hierarchy of carbohydrates for a low glycemic effect to benefit weight loss, you know, when people switch from um, to a whole grain like whole wheat, they get some benefit, but it's more benefit when they switch to a squash. Squash is better than whole wheat, you know, better and better than butternut and acorn squash. The next hierarchy up is eating a spaghetti squash, which is even lower glycemic. And going up from there, peas are even better, and going up from there, lentils and beans are even better. So we're saying we move up the chart so a person who has trouble losing weight, like a diabetic, is most of their starch is coming from lentils and beans and peas and maybe some spaghetti squash. They're not eating downward that low on it because, they, because they're very limited in the calories they need to consume to keep their sugars low, to keep their weight going down, and to, we want to have them, people with, a, with serious health problems to have an aggressive program that's aggressive enough to make sure they achieve the goals they need to achieve. No, I do not strain my nut milk. There's no reason to strain it. I like it creamy. I just have a Vitamix blender. It blends really smooth. There's no need to put it through a strainer. Um, so let's see. The, I didn't mention. So you know what we're talking about here? We're talking about we did this detox program to give us to rejuvenate stem cells, to enhance stem cell longevity, to raise the longevity proteins like CERT1 and AMP kinase. And you guys have to memorize these facts. So, what, so here's the question. What elevates the longevity proteins? What, like CERT1 and AMP kinase that stabilizes your stem cells, makes you live longer, what elevates those? And that's what you're doing here. What elevates those longevity proteins, what extends lifespan in them, is three things. High phytochemical exposure and phytochemical diversity. And you know what that means, right? The amount of these phytochemicals and the variety of phytochemicals you consume elevates your, these nylonic proteins. And number two, exercise, which we want to good, have good muscle tone as we age. So we were like, we're, we're moderately, we're getting the fat off our body, but we're not eating so little calories that we don't have good musculature. We have just enough calories to have good musculature, but we have very low calories. So our body's very lean, very low on fat. And then the third thing is caloric restriction and intermittent fasting. So that's, so we try to, you know, go without calories for sometimes, be a little hungry some evenings, skip dinner some nights, do some weeks of detox. We are doing, skipping a meal and doing juice like we did to this week. So what we're doing, this is a longevity program to maximize human longevity and very few people get it and very few people do it. But when you get it and you do it, it's fun, it's tasty, it's emotionally satisfying and it's intellectually satisfying. And it's fun to live without fear of disease too. The other, um, you know, the other thing I probably make a lot is I use a lot of roasted garlic. I'll take a whole bulb of garlic and I'll roast it in the oven at 250, 275 for 25 minutes till it gets moist, till it gets softened. Then I take the garlic and I cut the root off or cut it down the middle and I squeeze it to the, so the roasted garlic pops out. So I have a lot of roasted garlic in my refrigerator all the time already roasted. You know, it's fun to like squeeze the garlic and have it pop out. It's like giving birth to a baby, like it pops out. 
just like popping out of the garlic. You know, I want to watch things pop out. Um, so anyway, so I'll sometimes mix that roasted garlic with a little bit of that nut milk I made, maybe a little cashews and hemp seeds to make a garlic nutter. Maybe I'll put a little nutritional yeast in there too to make the garlic nutter tasty. So it's like I, I have my own healthy mayonnaise, garlicky mayonnaise right in my refrigerator all the time. If I'm rushing for a plane or I wanna make a really great sandwich, I can take a, a pita bread or an Ezekiel wrap, spread a little of that garlic nutter on top, put a roasted portobello, some red onions, some shredded you know, greens on there. Um, and you know what I'll do? I'll throw some basil in the garlic nutter and a little bit of maybe a clove of raw garlic. I'll make a pesto out of it or a little avocado with a little basil in the raw garlic nutter. So I'll take that garlic nutter and I could add tomato sauce to it and turn it into a marinara dressing. I could turn it, add the pesto, add the basil to it, turn it into a pesto dressing. I could add a little bit of balsamic, a little mustard into it. I can make it a Dijon mustard type um, garlic dressing. I could turn that, I could turn that garlic nutter into a few different dressings, but, but I usually make it into a pesto so I can put a little dollop of pesto on my sandwich with roasted portobello, red onion, maybe a little avocado, um, sprouts, tomato, wrap it up in a silver foil, throw it in my bag, and I have a great and exciting lunch. I put an apple in there, and I'm off to, to my travels. You know what I mean? So something really good and tasty. Um, so i preparing these things in advance. We're talking about my plan of like help my family and I cooking on the weekends, and maybe Wednesday evenings we cook and shop. So I can the other evenings I don't have I can just eat leftovers and I can go exercise and do other things. So we're not not cooking every night. I'm cooking Wednesday night and I'll make a lot of artichokes, like a whole um, big steamer full of of cut up artichokes. And then I'll have like cold artichokes with my next night or cold artichokes for lunch. Or I'll take the soup cold and I'll warm it up or something with the you know or I'll, so I'll so I'll make a broccoli and garlic dish. I'll make the wok vegetable dish. And that wok vegetable mushroom Thai dish I made. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make a whole wok full of it because if I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna have that for probably two nights in a row or maybe even three nights in a row. We make this really simple, not to overcomplicate it, to can fit it in your life. Try to go to bed at night on an empty stomach where there's no food in it. Modulate the amount of food you eat so you're, either, so you're at your ideal weight or moving towards your ideal weight at a pound every three days. If you're not losing a pound every three days, modulate your food intake. Except when you're within 10 pounds of your ideal weight, then you could lose a half a pound every three days or a, or a pound a week. So I wanna see that you guys are moving in the right direction at the rate at which you're supposed to be moving because when you move at that rate, then your fat cells become, no longer become dangerous, your insulin resistance goes down and they stop producing inflammatory compounds when you drop weight at that weight. Okay, I'm done with what I wanted to say tonight. I wanted to wrap up with the business plan with you having, with you understanding some basic simple recipes that I use every day so you could feel that this is doable. You could keep, you don't have to go through the book and have a different recipe every night. You just have to find a few recipes you like and move forward.